Thank you, Mr. Bob. Good morning, everybody. Happy homecoming. Let's start our time together and stand for worship. Stop our God. 
good because it's true. And today is a day of coming home and reflection on those who have gone home. And one day it'll be more than um, just something we imagine. It will be true as we stand face to face with our Savior, as those who we love are doing this very morning. So let's sing together, I Can Only Imagine. says here, the bullying is not the Bible, <laughs> but you need to read it. So anyway, there's a lot of good information in here. Um, let's see. Oh, we have a bunch of birthdays to celebrate this month. 
Uh, usually you sing on the day of the person's birthday, but what if we sing just because it's the month of the birthdays? Is that okay? Yeah. Bob, you want, can you play the piano for us? <laughs> All those birthdays we're going to celebrate right now. <laughs> I don't know how to lead, but... <laughs> homecoming folks I know y'all smell the good food out there and we just hope we have a good time we're asking the Lord to bless it and tonight let's see no choir practice tonight uh, although we need it but no, no choir practice tonight <laughs> Wednesday night meal will be turkey gravy mashed potatoes corn green beans and rolls and what's this world changers small group gathering in the sanctuary 7 p.m. on Wednesday and Friday is 10 a.m. Ladies Bible Study. Upcoming events, we have the Lord's Supper on the 30th. Thank you. Um, also, at 12.30, info meeting for the mission trips. Anybody involved in missions, want to be involved in missions? Come out and join us, learn more about it. Uh, November 13th, no, October 30th is the quarterly business meeting, 6 p.m. November 13th, 12.30 p.m. church council meeting. December 18th, 11 a.m. is our Christmas cantata. You don't want to miss that. Um, so now let's see. That's, um, oh, the biggest announcement. Jesus is Lord. I wanted to say that right now. Let's get that out of the way. Glory to his name. Um, let's see. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, I think it's a good time to remember the loved ones that are home with Jesus in heaven right now. Um, they're written on your bulletin here. Let's just take a moment of silence just to remember them and to thank and praise God for them. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you this day. We thank you for this homecoming day, Lord. Just bless the food, the fellowship ahead. And as uh, Brother Jim Hendricks brings the message, Lord, just anoint him especially heavy with the Holy Spirit today, Lord, and open our hearts that we might receive of your word and of your spirit what you have for us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. Today is homecoming, and so if you came here today to be a part of that, we want you to know you're a very very uh, special uh, to us, and we're glad that you came back to be part of a family reunion. The church is a family. Uh, God loves uh, families. He designed for us to be part of families, and the church family um, is the uh, unit that he works through. And uh, I just want to uh, let you all know that um, if you're here today, uh, you're here for a reason, a purpose, that God's a very purposeful God, and that he is always leading people uh, to be closer to him. And so it's not by accident you're here. Maybe you're here today and that you're running low on hope. God wants you to know that before you leave here, because His Spirit's here, you can leave high on hope. That the, the hope train is running through churches like this one all around the world. That God is wanting to deliver hope through His Spirit. And so whatever you're facing, and many people are facing a lot of difficult things right now, that no matter what you're facing, God through His Spirit can enable you to overcome and to deal with whatever you're facing. We have that kind of God. He is faithful to us. And so we have a lot of people um, here that we want to pray for. Um, Wendy Marsh wanted me to mention uh, by name the ones that we have lost um, that are in heaven, uh, that are no longer imagining because uh, what they're experiencing is real. <laughs> they don't have to imagine where they're at. But we do miss them. Jim Collum, Rodney Dalhouse, Jeanette Davenport, Nancy Glazer, Naomi Morris, and Nancy Singleton. And we continue to pray for those families uh, that have experienced that loss and still perhaps are mourning or grieving them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we uh, continue to flow with the Spirit the rest of the service. Lord, we just come here acknowledging that you're real and that you really want to be part of our lives and that there is no really greater purpose in life 
than to know you and to walk with you, to have fellowship with you, to have you speak to us at any moment, and that no matter what kind of difficulty we may face, that in the moment we can pray, God, manifest yourself. And we know that you will. For your word says that if we seek you, we'll find you if we seek you with our whole heart. And it's just like I prayed with my 13-year-old son this morning. I said, son, every day for the rest of my life, I want to pray that you and I find God together. And that by the end of the day, when we convene and talk and say, hey, where did you find God? That we can share where we found you. Because you're in the details of life. So God, we want to find you today. Will you show us where you're at? Will you speak to us? Will you reveal to us what you want us to know, how to think? God, we open our hearts to you now during this worship service and to what you want us to realize, to discover, to experience, to encounter, to be fulfilled because your Spirit's here and you want to fill us. Your, the Word says to be filled with the Spirit. So God, fill us with your Spirit today. We return thanks to you, God, for being here and being part of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Morning. Good, morning. Good to see you all today. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Stand and sing hymn number 277. Take my life and let it be consecrated to thee. <laughs> This is the time we have uh, for our children's moment. So all children, if you come forward, we have a special person that's going to be leading us this morning. You know, we're a church that wants to mentor and give uh, youth opportunities to minister and to learn how to minister to others. And so Tabitha Beeman is going to be doing our children's moment. So if you would come down. You're an awesome person. I want you to know that. Oh, and before we do the children's moment, I just want you to know, um, for those of you that are not intelligent, um, the word consecrated, that's deep south dialect for consecrated, okay? In case you thought that was an error, that's deep south language, okay? It's not a typo. That's deep south. 
right? <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, guys. Okay, so I'm assuming you all know today's homecoming. It's been said a lot so far this morning. Um, so do y'all know what homecoming actually is? Like, do y'all know what it means? Okay, <laughs> so homecoming is just coming home or going back to where you came from so you can hear it in the word. So, like, an example for homecoming season is at high schools, they have a big homecoming dance and a big homecoming football game. And basically, at the game, there's people who get crowned king and queen for homecoming, and the previous homecoming king and queen come back to crown the new ones, and the previous students come back to watch the football game, and they wear their school merchandise. This is a letterman jacket. <laughs> we don't really have those anymore. But <laughs> That's my mom's old one. So it's ancient. They're really old. <laughs> but anyways, homecoming kind of has a different meaning for us. So let's talk about that, because in the Bible, we have the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. Have y'all ever heard that one before? Nice, okay. <laughs> so um, it's in Luke 15, and Jesus tells the story of the prodigal son, and he wanted to go off on his own with his inheritance money um, from his father, but he ends up spending it all, and he had nothing. So he decided he needed to, he needed to go back home, um, after all that time, after spending all his money and after, like, abandoning his family, um, and he was not expecting anybody to be happy about him coming home. He was expecting them to reject him and just totally ignore the fact that he was even there because he was planning on sneaking in there. He didn't want to tell his father that he had to come home. So when his father saw him, he was so happy. He celebrated his homecoming. And... He forgave him for leaving and abandoning him with all the money, and he um, brought back together his family as a whole so they could all be happy together. Um, and that's how we should act towards God. He's our Father, and He wants us to come home with Him. So in Hebrews 13, 14, it tells us that earth is not our permanent home, but heaven will be. And when we get there, it will be a happy homecoming. God will forgive us of all of our sins, and Him he will love us and he will rejoice when he sees us there. And we can rejoice together too when we're there together. So don't live for this world because it's not your home and you won't get a worthy homecoming if you live for it. So live to go to heaven so you can have a good homecoming with your father. Yeah. Also, you can have some candy if you want. So. get our ushers to come forward, please. We need one more. come back to you, Jesus, that we can get on that right path. And Lord, that's what we pray for this church, Lord, that we continue to follow the path that you put out for us. Unlike some of the other ones where they won't spread out and turn it into commercials and everything else, Jesus, what we're here for is to hear the word of God and to love one another and help each other, Jesus. 
So, Lord, we pray the money's raised, that we continue to get this church to grow stronger and service more people throughout this county, state, country, anywhere else we are called to go. If some of our mission friends do, Lord, God bless us. And, Lord, bless this gathering today that we pray for you in your name. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Wendy, uh, for all you do, and uh, you're using your gift in music to uh, connect us to God. You know, I can't think of a better way to introduce today's uh, guest speaker for homecoming than to simply say this. Um, in life, we all need a good friend. And in the last four years, I have found a very, very, very good friend. Jim Hendrix. It was... It was ordained by God that we meet and that uh, we be good friends. 
And Jim is a classy guy. He's very loyal to the heart. He loves people. He loves God. And he's come to love on you by giving you a message. And today's message has been ordained by God for you to hear that. And so I'm so glad that, Jim, you're willing to come here and minister to um, God's people. Thank you, Jim. Amen, amen. So I'd, I'd love to preach this morning, but since the young lady stole my sermon, <laughs> I think we're just going to have to eat. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, <laughs> no, that, Matt, excellent job uh, exegeting the word. Young lady. Uh, amen. So uh, I, I thought about preaching on homecoming, but uh, I, I, um, I love a complete thought. Uh, I, I think that sometimes what we've done in American churches is, is taught you how to live in sound bites and cliches, and we have not preached the whole word of God. And so I, I, I felt like last time I came, I left you hanging. Right? I gave you the first part of Nehemiah. We talked about the need to build and how the world needed us to be involved in building. Uh, and, and I'm so glad I have the opportunity to come back and maybe finish that thought for you. Because I believe as we, uh, how many of you watch Netflix? It's not a shameful thing. It's okay. <laughs> uh, amen. <laughs> At the beginning of many episodes, if you've taken a break, I, some of you probably watch it all the way through, but if you, if you take a break, They'll recap you, so I want to give you a little recap in case you weren't here last time. And as we left this, we thought about these ideas that, number one, we need a few good men and women, right, amen, to, to build and to be part of what God is doing. We also need good men and women who understand the great mission that we're part of and that also are willing to work, amen. And I think I want to kick that into Nehemiah 4 as we look at Nehemiah 4 this week and, and we go to God's word. Uh, and, and Nehemiah 4 1 says this When Sam Ballot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became furious. And I would say this as the world is looking at you and I this morning, they're looking at crossroads as crossroads goes day in and day out and does its Christian thing in the world. There's never a time in which the world is going to understand what you and I are doing. Uh, don't make me come out this early. There, there's never a time at which they're going to look at us and understand and be able to get what you and I are a part of, what we're doing, what we're meant to do, what we're, what we're called to do. Listen, that's the reality of building. And I think as this world grows further and further from Christ and God and our roots, that's more and more true, isn't it? He mocked the Jews before his colleagues and the powerful men of Samaria and said, What are these pathetic Jews doing? Can they restore it by themselves? Will they begin to offer sacrifices? And listen to me, part of this is that, it, that they'll, never, they'll, never, they'll never understand our intentions. They'll always suspect this is up to something. Have you ever invited someone to church simply and they want to know, oh, what is in it, you know what's in it here? What's, what's the strings attached? What, what, oh, a free meal, really? Yeah, a free meal. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's no more, it's, that's all I'm asking you to come and see and see what's going on and be part of this. But listen to me, they look at us with suspicion because they live in a world that's out to get them. Will they ever finish it? Can they bring back these burnt stones back to life from the mounds of rubble? They constantly degrade the material you and I are working with, constantly looking at the people that you and I are involved with and say, say, those are the people you're going to do something with? The, the, those people? You, know, you ever had the devil call you out and ask you if you're the person? <laughs> You are going to do something? Yeah, that's the people God's called, these burnt stones, these pieces of rubble that God is going to build again with. But Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was beside him, said, Indeed, even if a fox climbed up what they are building, he would break down their stone wall. And listen to me, the world is consistently applying their own worldly standards to measure our success. 
Then we'll look at numbers and nickels and noise. And I think the church has adopted this idea of if it's big and people are coming and we're generating income and excitement and noise, then it's successful. But listen, let me tell you something. What we're building here is lives. It is changed lives that, that we are building, we are working with, and, and that's the measure of the success. If it's one person, one life, you know, many of you here today, you might have been made to come here. You might have been guilted into it. Right? That's, a, that's what homecomings are about. This is the moment. I, I think that you're right in homecoming, but most of the time, Christian, you know, church homecomings are the guilting moment, Right? You best come here or you're not welcome at Christmas at the house, right? <laughs> we will take you off the list for Secret Santa. No, listen to me. You, you, we, we, they're always trying to apply some level of success that works out there, but it doesn't work that way in here. They begin to cry out, listen, our God, for we are despised. Make their insults return on their own heads and let them be taken as plunder into a land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt, nor let their sin be erased from your sight because they have angered the builders. How many of you sometimes get angry at what's going on? How many get angry at the situation the world is in and the way they sometimes look at us with suspectful eyes? I'm angry. We are angry. And I think the idea here that they say, and we should say this morning, is that the devil has picked the fight with the wrong church. Uh, you know, it's, it's sad to me that we're not people that are willing to fight. If you say something to me at work, I'm willing to fight. If you get into my face at work, I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to take it to you, and I have to hold that in, 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 in you know, intention, right? I have to, have to not be the guy I'd like to be, right? But, but when we come to church, we get so sanctified that we are no longer ready to fight. And this should motivate us this morning. This, this passion, this anger, this discontent with what the world's saying to us and what we're dealing with the world, it should motivate us. Because I understand that I am building something that is not Jim's thing or Kevin's thing or Crossroads thing. It is God's work. Amen. So we rebuilt the wall. We, we went to work, church. We began to put the pieces together. We began to do the work. And let me tell you something. Building and then rebuilding is a holy act because if we think about it from the very beginning, my God is a builder. Amen. What did he say into the dark, into the chaos? He spoke into this chaos, let there be order. Isn't that what building is? Isn't that what rebuilding is? It is looking into chaos and looking into the rubble and looking into destroyed lives and saying, we're going to bring order into that. It's a holy act that we're involved in here, folks, as we build, as we rebuild what has been missing in our generation. And they built until the entire wall was joined together all the, all the way around up to half its height. And listen to me, many churches, this is right where we land. This is right where we go to. We build to there. We're halfway there. Listen to me. It takes time to build, folks. It takes time to, to get there. Don't get discouraged just because it's not all the way up. Don't get discouraged because we're not where we think we ought to be in life or in church or in dynamics. God is still working. God is still doing things on behalf of us this morning. He says this about the people. For the people, they had the will to keep working. See, that's the problem, isn't it? Isn't that the problem? Do we get tired? I, I'm, I'm older now than I was. And when I do things, it hurts in ways that never hurt before. I, I worked at the church all day yesterday putting, putting boards on our deck. We have a big deck. We, we're, we're trailers and it's a big deck and we got fall festival and me and another brother were out there putting these boards down and on our hands and knees and and i'll tell you right now i can't feel my knees <laughs> i'm pretty sure i brought them but i have no idea where they're at 
they're numb, completely numb. But listen to me, we have to keep working, don't we? We have to keep moving at it. Listen to me, building requires my will and your will to be knit together, but also be knit together in God. Amen? That my will is no longer what I want to do. I didn't want to go yesterday and put boards on the deck. I honestly had went with my electrical tools because when you're an electrician, you're a hire on a job and you ain't got to do manual labor. I had my electrical tools. I was going to do some high, fancy electrician stuff. You know what I mean? Not get bogged down in that work. But I have a choice because the boards were already ripped up and there's a big hole. And we had to get together our wills. And listen to me, many times when we come to church and we come together to work and to build, listen to me, we're going to have to knit together, maybe put down the tools that I wanted to use and pick up the tools God's asked me to be used. Amen. And do things that maybe I didn't intend to do or want to do. Because I'm building. Verse 7, when Samballat, Tobiah, and the Arabs, the Ammonites, the Ashdodites, when they heard that the repair to the walls of Jerusalem was progressing and that the gaps had become closed, they began to be furious. They were upset. They were mad that the things of God were still moving forward. And they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to throw it into confusion. And let me tell you something right now. If you don't believe me, you're wrong. That the enemy is always trying to keep you from building. The enemy always has something else for you to do, somewhere else for you to be, something for you to be involved in, some distraction. The enemy's always got something. And let me tell you something. He's not afraid to come in here. So we prayed... Our God, I'm going to go back up. I know it's bad form to turn my back on you, but I got to get it back up here somehow. So we prayed to our God. I got one step at my church, so it's easy to get back and forth. <laughs> it's a long journey. I'm going to be winded for this. Over with. So, so we prayed to our God. This is what they did. They said, listen, the enemy is coming against us. It's beginning to attack us. He's coming against us. So what are we going to do? What do we do, church? Man. Prayer is the most important part of our defense against the enemy. Prayer is the place where we're, our will is changed to his will. Amen. It's not the place where we ask for stuff. Okay. It's not the place where we ask for stuff. Amen. It's not the place where I say, God, I, this is how I want my life to lurk out. No, no. Prayer is the place in which I look into the abyss and say, God, whatever it is, isn't that what Christ prayed in the garden? I don't want to do this. Take this cup from me. But nevertheless, your will, not mine. Prayer is the most important part of that defense this morning. But listen to me. Sometimes we're really good at saying we're going to pray or we're going to do this in prayer. We're going to pray for you, brother. We're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for that. But listen to me. They also stationed a guard because of the enemy day and night. So not only did they pray, but listen to me, vigilance is also a very important part of our defense. In fact, it's probably the part that the church has forgotten over the last several generations. We just kind of stayed in our building, stayed in our four walls, played our hymns, right? Did our thing, did, did it the same way we've always done it. Just let the world go by. We retreated. See, the church is called to be vigilant, to watch, to guard. Verse 10, it says this, in Judah it was said, the strength of the laborer fails. These people are hearing about what's going on. This rumor begins to start. The strength of the labor is failing. There's so much rubble. There's so much destruction. They'll never be able to do this. We will never be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said they'll never realize it until we're among them and we can kill them and then we can stop the work. And listen, tell me, church, if we need to pray, we need to be vigilant, but listen to me, there's something else we need to do this morning, and that's we need to quit listening to the lies. Right. Amen. Amen? Amen. They were hearing these words, there's too much junk in the road, we'll never be able to build, we'll never be able to get this off the ground, crossroads will never be used any greatly for God. 
This church is, a, is an old church. We're, our days are past and numbered. We had a great pastor and we had a great run, but now we're just going to watch it to the end. Listen, that's the lie. That's a lie. And if you're buying into that, you're buying into the lie. And clarity says there's a mission, isn't there? Are there still lost people who live in James City? Okay. Do you still have lost family members? It, it, is New Bern, I know it's, it's all the way across the river. Is New Bern got lost people in it? Almost 300 churches in New Bern. Almost 300. Last time I counted, it was like 286 churches. And there's still lost people. And the lie of the devil says there's too many churches, there's too much going on, we don't have enough to offer. Let me tell you something, that's a lie. Clarity says there's, a, there's prayer, there's vigilance, and there's our mission, and we need to be trusting in that. Verse 12, when the Jews who lived nearby arrived, they said to us time and time again, everywhere we turn, the enemy is attacking us. Isn't that how it feels today? Isn't that how it feels everywhere we go? That time and time again, every time I go forward, the enemy is there to attack me, to derail me, uh, coming against my finances, coming against my family, coming against health, coming against all the things in my life. Everywhere we go, they attack us. And listen to me, there are some keys here to building in the battle because you and I are not going to get a break. Here's your hope. There's your hope. You're not going to get a break. That's not how this life is designed. Oh, that seems, you seem excited about that. <laughs> if you're looking for a break, there's a place for that. It's called heaven. <laughs> and we will get there, amen. But in the meantime, God gave us a four-letter word. Whew. You know the easiest way to overcome that being a four-letter word is to enjoy work. See, I enjoy work. I thrive in work. I love to work. The harder the work, the better it is. The dirtier the work, the better it is. Clean toilets, let's do it. <laughs> right? My wife's the same way. Miss Peggy, that's my wife. My wife's the same way. She loves a house that's dirty. She loves a disgusting house. In fact, it makes her mad if she goes to clean a house and it's already clean. She says, I didn't get to clean the clean today. See, you and I, we, we live and we work and we build in a battle, in an attack, and you and I need to be prepared for that. 13, so I stationed people behind the lowest sections of the wall at very vulnerable areas. And listen to me, you and I all, if we're honest with ourselves, if we face ourselves in a mirror and we look and we make an honest judgment ourselves, there are some vulnerable areas in our lives. Right? Right? Or some areas in which I'm vulnerable, you're vulnerable, they're not all the same. But listen to me, we all deal with these places, and we need to look and deal with our weaknesses. I think if we look and we, we look at our churches, our churches have some places where we're really strong, but maybe there's some places where we're weak. We can't, okay. It's homecoming, right? It's family, right? We have a rule at my house, big family, I've got... I've lost count of how many kids I got, but it's a lot. <laughs> it's somewhere around six kids and 18 grandchildren, but, you know, after a while, you just, you know, it's, it's on a spreadsheet somewhere. <laughs> I, I'm not lying. Uh, but, but listen to me, when you come to my house and you sit at the table, one of the things we do is at the table we can talk about real things. <laughs> at the table we can get to real issues. And listen to me, we're at the table. Are we at the table? We come here to, to deal with real issues, to be real with ourselves, real with our church, real with the people around us and say, listen to me, we got to deal with weaknesses, don't we? We got to look and, and, and listen, that's not, that's not saying we, oh, that's weak, we're not going to, no. What did they do? They sent guards to help those in those weak places. They begin to help in them. Are you weak in some areas? Absolutely. Can a brother or sister come beside you and stand in that place? Wouldn't that be better than talking about me? Man, we could deal with our weaknesses. Man, listen, I don't, I don't always do the right thing. I, you may. I don't always say the right thing. I'm not always gifted in being, being uh, gentle. Right? 
thank God God is able to be there and put people in my life to come in and help in those weak moments and be in those places. Kevin and I, we are, we are, we are friends because we share our weaknesses. We share our struggles. We, we journey in this path. Listen to me, church. We need to be able to deal with our weaknesses and put places of strength in those. He said this, I stationed them by families with their spears, their swords, and their bows. Listen to me. He took these folks and he created powerful, dynamic teams, right? Amen. And he began to station them there because, listen, in a family, there's a dad and there's a mom and there's kids, right? And there's, that's a dynamic. If there's a dad, then there's someone to be grumpy. And if there's a mom, then somebody's taking care of food. And if there's kids, there's enough energy to make it happen. Right? And here, there are some grumpy people, probably. Right? I mean, yeah, 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 right? There are some people that take care of the stuff, the food, right? There's Martha's and there's Mary's, right? And God brings us into these teams to be stationed and to be working. Not everybody's a fighter. But listen to me, you want a fighter on your team, don't you? But you don't want to be all fighters. That could be problematic. <laughs> Uh, 14 after I made an inspection I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people don't be afraid of them remember the great and awe inspiring Lord and fight for your countrymen your sons and your daughters your wives and your homes right he gives us this great like Churchill we will fight them in the fields we will fight them he gives us this great this, this just inspiring listen to me one thing we can do is we, we shore up our weaknesses and deal with that we create these teams so listen to me we need to speak powerful inspiring words don't we well, this is going to, this is, it's all, it's all downhill. <laughs> Sometimes that's a good word. I like it downhill when we're walking. <laughs> Took Kevin on a hike with my church. <laughs> Kevin and Trevor, we, and I, I started the hike. I said, listen, boys, it's all downhill. I know how to read a map. It's all downhill. I swear to you, we, it was five hours of uphill. <laughs> but once we got there, it was all downhill. And it, the downhill was worse than the uphill. <laughs> None of those were inspiring words. The only thing I could come up with the whole way is, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> Listen to me, we, we sometimes face very complicated moments in our lives, in our homes, in our teams, in our church, and we need to be able to speak words. And, and you know, it's interesting to me, there is a place you can find good words. <laughs> Right? You got this little book. Some of it's leather bound. Some of it's on your phone. Right? It's called Bible. Right? And in the Bible, there are great inspiring words. And listen to me. If we take those words and we begin to bring them into our life, they're words that keep us in the motivation of moving forward. 15. When our enemies heard that we knew their scheme and that God had frustrated it, every one of us returned to his own work on the wall listen to me we know god is working we know god is in our midst but listen to me at the end of the day what do we got to do we got to get back to the task amen got to get back to it we can't quit, quit just quit that's one of the things that now has bit me now as we did this last hike and 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 now i'm bit i want to get out there more i want to climb more mountains i want to i want to we bet we went i just did 23 miles on, on another part of the appalachian trail with some of the guys from church and 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 we backpacked the whole way we took all our stuff and it was a great moment and yeah it, it was terrible at sometimes don't get me wrong and my wife says you're the only person i know that vacations in the terrible places <laughs> You go walk with stuff on you, go to Armenia. What, do you, what is wrong with you? I, I don't know what's wrong with me. But I know this, listen to me, that at the end of the day, God didn't say, hey, just go back and take a nap, right? Go get you on the Hulu. God said, go back, get on the wall. From that day on, half of the men did the work while the other half held spears, shields, bows, and armor. I don't want to close with this idea of the builder's call because I believe God is calling you and calling me to be builders in this place to build specifically for Crossroads and for James City and for Newburn, for this area that God would call you to do something. Amen. Amen. The officers supported all the people of Judah who were rebuilding the wall. The laborers who carried the loads 
worked with one hand and held a weapon with the other. Each of the builders had his sword strapped around his waist while he was building, and the one who sounded the ram's horn was right beside me. And listen, every day as they're out there, they're working and they're fighting and they're ready. Listen to me at any moment. And, and, and that sounds like a lot of jobs, doesn't it? How many of you have more jobs today than you'd like? Right? You know, you, are you dad? Are you wife? Are you, you know, grandpa, grandma, you know, church, uh, this thing, that thing, employed? I'm bivocational. I work a full time job and pastor. I get it. You know, sometimes we just have a lot of jobs, a lot of things coming in. But listen to me, this is what I love about my God. My God never says, ah, just take it easy. What does he say? <laughs> oh, while you're building, would you mind carrying the sword? <laughs> oh, also the ram's horn <laughs> why you're not doing anything this is the epitome of a mom who's somewhere and the kids keep handing her stuff right and, hey mom carry this hey ma'am hold this hey mom carry this hey mom carry this and then what happens the husband says hey do you got room for my keys in there <laughs> there's always something that god is saying to us listen church we can always do more we can always do more I was talking to Armand, my buddy in, in Armenia, before, actually in Sunday school, I wasn't paying attention to Sunday school, I was talking to Armand on the phone, and, and I sent him pictures of Lydia in Sunday school, tell, to making sure he knew she was behaving, and, uh, and, because it's a rare thing, you know what I mean, and, and, uh, and so we were talking back and forth, and he was praying for you guys, and think about this, here's a guy whose who's church this morning, a couple hours ago, probably had four women and one man, two men, a couple kids, uh, uh, you know, in, in a little place with nothing, and, and, and he is stopping his day to pray for you, to pray for, for what's going on here. He's on his knees right now. I told him we started at 11. It was about 30 minutes ago, and I guarantee he's on his knees right now. Because he, he understands he could do more. But we could all do a little more, amen. 19 and I said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people the work is enormous isn't it isn't the work enormous sometimes the work seems so enormous so large so vacuous that I said there's no way I can do it God it's so spread out and we're separated far from one another along the wall and many times like we're down in Harlem you guys are up here and we are long ways down the wall aren't we Listen to this. Whenever you hear the sound of the ram's horn, rally to us there. And until then, and I, and I added that, but until then, our God will fight for us. Amen. So not only can we do more, listen, I believe God has called us to respond quickly. You know, church, we, we, we live in a world in which the world is not responsive to people's needs, is it? They just want to give them something and let them walk away. Hey, let's give you some, let's give you some money. Let's give you this thing here. Let's give you a free phone. Let's give you this thing here and get out of my face. Listen to me, the church needs to be more than that, don't we? Amen. That we are committed long term to folks. See them all the way through. And listen, it's it's tough. I get it. Ministry is tough. Watching people go ups and downs in life is tough. But when I hear, when I hear it. It begs the question, am I even listening for the ram's horn? Am I listening? Are my ears open? In 21, so we continued the work while half of the men were holding spears from daybreak until the stars came out. And at that time, I also said to the people, let everyone and his servants spend the night inside Jerusalem. Come inside the walls. Come in to safety. All of you come in. That's a wonderful picture of that homecoming, isn't it? Come inside the walls. Isn't that what we build here? Walls that people can come in, and they come into safety and security and a place where they're cared for in that moment. Come on in so they can stand guard by night and work by day. Why do we want them in the walls? Because we want to put them to work. Know what he says? Come on in. We, come on in. There's safety and security here. Oh, by the way, while you're here, you man hold the spear. <laughs> Listen, church is not a place where, where, we, where, where we want you to warm a pew or a chair. Right? We can turn the heat up if we want the chairs warmed. 
I think it's already on. I'm sweating. <laughs> but, but what we want you here is because we want you involved in the work. See, if you're here and you're not involved in the work, are you really involved? Are you really here? And I and my brothers, my servants, and the men of the guard with me, we never took off our clothes. We never, never rested. We never took a moment of break. Listen to me. Each of us carried his weapon. Even when we were washing, we were ready. We were prepared. Listen to me. We were watching always for God's move. You know that that's the truth here, that they were not watching for the enemy? What did he say? If the enemy attacked, we're going to blow the horn. You need to come to us. But what did he say? Our God's going to fight for us. See, we're not watching for the enemy. If we spend our life watching for the enemy, we're always spending our life in the negative part of that, aren't we? I'm not watching for the enemy. I already know he's going to do his thing. You know who I'm watching for? Woo! I'm watching for God. Because I know he's wanting to work and help and be part of our lives. Amen. Let's bow our heads in here. I don't know how you normally close, but I felt like for me, especially on a day where maybe there's a lot of people here who maybe you haven't been to church in a while. I grew up like that. I, I was a young man, grew up in a church much like this, young, young Baptist kid and grew up around things. And then I went through my wandering stage, went and did my thing, joined the Marines, traveled the world. But listen to me, I realized in my life that there was something missing. I woke up one day outside the walls. And perhaps you're here this morning, you're outside the walls, and you say, you know what, it looks good in there. It looks like there's hope in there. It looks like there's life in there, safety in there. And listen, all that's available. And perhaps God's calling you back into the walls. So it's a holy work of rebuilding lives in them. Perhaps you're here this morning, you've never made a decision for Christ, and you say, you know what, I need God to work in me and build in me. If that's either of those, we're going to probably play a song, I assume. Yeah, if Don will come. Don, Bob will come and play a song. And, and we're going to play some music and take some time at the altar this morning. Listen to the church here. Pastor Kevin, many have alluded to your family. you got a big family. You know one thing about a big family, we don't all talk to each other all the time. There's times at which we have problems. Church has problems, doesn't it? But listen, we could put that all under the blood of Christ this morning. We can knit ourselves together, knit ourselves under leadership, Pastor Kevin, and what God's brought him to do. I believe he is the man for this, that God has brought him for this. And I believe you are here for what God is doing to build this wall. And let's let's play some music and Amen. Brother. Let's all stand.
just a few wrap up. Jimmy, stay here. Um, 